Great. So the next speaker is Sylvan, and I think Sylvan uh, doesn't need an introduction to basically anyone here, but I'll um, I'll do my best. So um, Sylvan is a research engineer at Hugging Face, and he's one of the core maintainers of Transformers and the developer behind Hugging Face Accelerate. And he likes making model training more accessible and building many of the sort of fundamental tools that we use, like the trainer, for example, that we explained today. And uh, a little personal comment, Sylvan was actually a great inspiration to me um, because I read your blog post about how you went on this journey from becoming a, a kind of math uh, teacher or, um, in France and kind of self-taught yourself how to do deep learning with fast AI and then working with Jeremy. And uh, this, uh, this story is really cool. And I think people should read this to, to get a sense of like how you can really break into this field with a, with a ton of hard work that... Um, it really, it really encouraged me because I came from a different field myself and it was nice to see that it's possible. Thanks. So Sylvain's going to talk to us today about supercharging your PyTorch training loop with Hugging Face Accelerate. So let me just add the file. Hi, everyone. I'm Sylvain. I'm a research engineer at Hugging Face. And today I'm here to talk to you about our library, Accelerate. This is a library built on top of PyTorch to make training on any kind of distributed setup as easy as possible, while letting you retain full control over your training loop. This is super convenient when you want to implement a training tweet that is not supported by the trainer API, but you still want to run your script on several GPUs or on TPUs. For this talk, I've written a small script that fine-tunes the BERT model on the glue collet dataset. To go over it quickly, I load the dataset using the Hugging Face datasets library Process it by tokenizing everything, load my pre-trained model, create a data collator that will pad the examples dynamically to the longest one in each batch, create my training and validation data loaders, my optimizer, a learning rate scheduler, then go over a traditional PyTorch training loop with an evaluation at each epoch. I can launch my training script quite easily, but what if I now want to launch it on several GPUs at the same time? This is going to require a few changes in my code. Let's have a look at why. Let's say we have four GPUs. On each GPU, we are going to load a different batch of data that will go through our model and will get a loss for that batch. This will allow us to compute the gradients different on each GPU. We then average those gradients across all the GPUs before performing the optimizer step. This way, the model, which was copied on all GPUs, stays the same on each GPU during the whole training. On this slide, everything colored in blue is the same on the four GPUs, while the boxes in pink indicate objects that are different on each GPU. In terms of code, here is what we first need to add to our script. First, it needs to accept a new argument called local rank, that will indicate the index of the process launched. Then, we have to initialize the torch distributed environment and set up the device using that local rank. Lastly, we need to wrap the model in a distributed data parallel container, which will be responsible for the average across processes of the gradients we saw on the previous slide. This part was easy enough. The main challenge is to make sure our data is handled exactly the same way on each GPU. We need to launch the training script on each GPU. Each one of those scripts will execute the same operations, and we need to give the same results. The dataset needs to be prepared exactly the same way on each of those processes. It looks easy, said Levis, but some operations, like converting a list into a set to remove duplicates, are not deterministic. This means that if you use such an operation, for instance to generate your labels, you may have your labels ordered differently on each GPU then you may need to make sure the training data is shuffled the same way on each process. Otherwise, each GPU might look at data another GPU has already treated. Only then can you have reliable batches to send to your model. In terms of code, this requires all of those changes just to replace the shuffle equal true line we used in our training data loader into something that will work properly for distributed training. Now that we have those changes ready, we need to launch our training on the GPUs. PyTorch provides a launcher for this, so you can type this command, python-m torch.distributed.launch minus nproc per node, the number of GPUs you have, two here, the name of the training script, 
followed by the arguments to your script. The script launches properly and starts training. But note that if we try to execute it like a regular Python script, it will fail. If we want to train on TPUs, we'll need additional changes compared to the distributed training on several GPUs. The device changes, we need to wrap the training data loader in some parallel loader, and there's a change in the optimizer.step line, which needs to become xm.optimizer.step.optimizer. Launching the script with the distributed launcher we saw before would then fail. We need a special launcher for TPUs. And of course, launching the script like a regular Python script fails again. If we wanted to use mixed precision training, which I won't detail here, we need to add even more lines of code to the original training script. It will then run properly on GPU, but will fail on CPU. In general, adding support for any new training technique will require you to learn a lot about that given technique and add lines to your code that will then make your script stop working on a simple setup and make debugging super hard. Accelerate has been created to solve that problem. By learning one new API that requires a few changes to your script, you then get something you can run on all kinds of distributed setup, which also supports mixed precision training or advanced techniques like zero data parallelism or zero offload developed by DeepSpeed. The changes to your training loop are kept to a bare minimum. You need to import a new object called Accelerator, instantiate it at the beginning of your training script, then send all your main objects, model, optimizer, data loaders, to the prepare method of that accelerator. The last line to change is the loss.backward line, which needs to become accelerator.backward loss. Using Accelerate also allows you to get rid of the device placement lines, as the library will automatically handle that for you. It also makes it easy to implement distributed evaluation, which we didn't even start showing in the previous examples. You just need to gather the prediction on labels across all GPUs when you want to use them to compute your metric. To then launch your script, there are a few utilities added by Accelerate. First, you can set up a configuration by typing Accelerate config. This will pop up a few questions you need to answer. Once it's finished, a config is stored in your cache, by default in your home directory .cache slash hugging slash accelerate. You can then use accelerate launched, followed by the name of your training script and all the arguments. But your script can still be launched as a regular Python script if you need to debug. It works regardless of whether you have a GPU or not. You can use accelerate launch to launch your script on several GPUs or on TPUs. You can still use the Torch distributed launcher instead of Accelerate Launch if you prefer. All in all, with just learning one new API which added four new lines of code, your custom training loop can now run on any kind of distributed setup. Now, if you are in a notebook and want to launch a distributed training, for instance on Colab, Accelerate comes with a launcher you can use. There aren't any TPUs available at the time I was shooting this video, so I'm using a machine with two GPUs instead. The main thing to remember is that you should put all the parts of the code that concern objects that will go on the multiple devices, GPUs or TPU cores, in one big training function. You can have a look at your dataset outside of this training function, but the model, the data loaders, your optimizer, and the accelerator should all be defined inside. Here, my training function is very similar to the script I just showed you. The only difference is that I'm not using arcpaths and set all my upper parameters in a cell. If you have executed any instruction that initializes CUDA or PyTorch XLA, you will need to restart your notebook or get an error. For instance, here, we ask for the number of GPUs at the very top, and when trying to launch our training function, the launcher failed because CUDA was already initialized. Restarting and not executing the first cell will make everything work smoothly. We can see the training function is launched twice, as many of the logs are duplicated before the training starts. Since I added a few lines to only display the progress bar and print on main process, the training logs only appear once. This concludes my presentation of the Accelerate library. I hope you enjoyed it, and that you'll give Accelerate a try the next time you need to use a custom training loop. If it doesn't work as expected, please let us know on the forums or on GitHub. Awesome. Thanks a lot for that super 
detailed video and really nice transitions. You're like the Adobe Premiere Pro. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Makes my, makes my poor version of just a CoLab notebook uh, feel very inferior. <laughs> um, so I think we have time for one question. Um, and the question might be like, you know, on, on the space of like training models, we have things like the trainer, we have Accelerate, and there's also some other frameworks um, that people can use. Um, what kind of decisions would you think about? Like, when should I use Accelerate versus the trainer or something else, for example, like if I'm using like TensorFlow, does it work with Accelerate, that kind of stuff? Sure, great question. Um, so my my advice is always to to say that if you just want to quickly fine tune the model to see uh, like what kind of results you can get, uh, or if you on your in your data set and in your task, uh, you should just use the um, the Ewing phase trainer, or if you are using TensorFlow, Keras that fit uh, because that's gonna just work, and you'll get you'll get results without needing to to go under how to train a model with PyTorch uh, in just a few minutes. Uh, if you know if you want to try a, a specific training tweak, uh, then uh, that's where Accelerate was specifically designed because those objects like the trainer, once you want to, to change a little thing, like you should in your talk, for instance, to, to use a custom loss, uh, you have to learn like how it works internally. You have to learn the methods uh, to, that you need to, to subclass. So when you're there, it's actually, I think, more useful to just go back to a training loop and, and supercharge it with Accelerate if you need distributed training. Uh, and if you, it doesn't work with TensorFlow, it's specifically built on top of PyTorch. So for TensorFlow, you'll need to, to to go to a manual training loop in terms of, um, but yeah, that's pretty much uh, as my advice uh, there. Cool. And then maybe just a very quick last one, which I've asked the other uh, library developers <laughs> is what's on the roadmap for Accelerate? What are the kind of things you're interested in, in working on? So yeah, a lot uh, is on the roadmap for, for Accelerate. Uh, we have uh, a few improvements to the existing. Uh, for instance, the deep speed integration could be made a little bit better. So we, we're going to work on that. Uh, and then we'll also add a, a, a new utility to, to make it easier to have checkpoint uh, directly inside Accelerate. For now, you still need to separately save your model, your, your, your random generator states, or, or the optimized state, or the learning rate scheduler state. So we're going to build one nice utility function that does all of that for you and upload them to the Ging test hub and so that you can resume your training from any machine super easily, uh, which is one of code for Accelerate. Awesome. 